This story comes from this bar. Uh, there was a few years back, me and our mutual friend Randy Rogers wrote a song together. And we recorded it on a, our record called Garage. And as we were, that was, uh, that was the song that we recorded. It was uh, this time around. In this, uh, it's, I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play something else. But the, the story has to do with that song. So anyway, there was this guy at the record label, his name was Tony Brown, he's a really badass dude. And he knows what he's doing. He was responsible for Steve Earl, and he was responsible for the early good cocaine Jimmy Buffett days. And he played uh, piano with Elvis, and he was responsible for all the good stuff that George Strait put out, Alan Jackson, all that good stuff. He's the reason that we signed up with the record deal. And uh, we asked him to come down and uh, help produce a record because we've been telling these people no for about three years. And then they came down, Tony came down, and he uh, recorded two songs with us. Insisted that we smoke pot before we record, and I told him, man, I, I love to smoke pot, but it's, uh, it's like after I get all my shit done, I'm going to smoke pot. I can't, I can't focus when I'm stoned. So uh, he insisted, because he kept giving me that Steve Earl shit, saying, well, Steve used to do this back in the day. So I said, all right, dude, if you want to smoke, we'll smoke, but I mean, you're, this, is not, this is not the pot from the 80s. This is good shit. So he got stoned. He called his wife. He freaked out. He got on the airplane and he went home. So he did not get to produce our record. So I sent him uh, all the songs that we did, and he heard this time around, and he said, I love it. It's solid country gold. Doesn't that sound like a bunch of bullshit? He said, that's all, country gold, baby. And he goes, the only thing is, nobody plays harmonica in country music. I said, well, you need to call Willie Nelson and tell him that he's been playing shit for about four years. So, long story short, he said, let me fix some things, send it to me. So he sent it to him, and he completely took the entire band out and just left my voice and added all these Nashville slick rick musicians in here. And I, I, I know these people. I, I, kindergartners with my band. And I know how they sound. And I know how I sound. I'm the guy that was playing the lead rip of the song and the jackass that did it in the studio didn't get it right. So I said, Tony, what did you do? He goes, I added some piano. And that's it. I said, man, don't lie to me. I know what you did. I called him out. I said, if you release this to the public, everything that we worked for, I was right here in this wall slick great Nashville suit my authority. And I'm talking, I love him. I mean those words with all the love in my heart. I was in that parking lot bitching to him saying, if you release this right now, everything that we work for is flushed down the toilet because we have stood our ground to be our music and our band and we're just going to fall into the Nashville thing. Somebody took a band that did what they did and they went to Nashville and then they sucked. And we don't want that. <clears throat> so he admitted to what he did. And then I wrote this song about that situation. Are you guys alive? Thank you. 